let's get a little philosophical and talk about a topic I really love known as encapsulation. So I'm going to bring up this topic in the context of our enemy, complexity. Anytime we try and build programs, that's the thing that we have to contend with. It's not the language itself, right? It's not the semicolons and the whatever else. And it's not even necessarily the bugs that we face or whatever. The main enemy ultimately is complexity. That's the source of our anxiety. And that's the thing that makes a good programmer different from a bad programmer is the ability to handle complexity. So you guys saw, whenever in these lecture videos, I built a basic array and linked list based class. Whenever you sat down and built a somewhat larger thing, the array and linked list based decks, you had to contend with more complexity. And keeping that complexity under control was the principal challenge of that assignment. And I'd say that the difference between someone who spent four hours and 20 hours on that project is most, uh, mostly how they handled that complexity, how they managed all the pieces, how much of the program they tried to keep in their brain at one time. Okay? So there's a bunch of different tools for managing the complexity of something we're trying to build. One of them is hierarchical abstraction. So whenever you build something truly huge, it's very important that you have layers of abstraction so that somebody, for example, who wants to use a list doesn't need to know about the fact that there's an array under the hood. Okay? So that's something that's very familiar. And that's something you didn't spend too much time fretting with uh, in Project 1A. Um, however, moving forwards, we're going to go to scales much bigger than Project 1A and 1B on Project 2. And that's where these ideas are going to be super important. So hierarchical, <laughs> it's a hard word, hierarchical abstraction uh, is one way. And another is this lovely set of ideas uh, that a computer scientist named David Parnas put together, uh, which basically uh, is built around the notion of design for change. Okay? So what David means by that is you should assume that you have some massive system uh, that each of the individual pieces can be swapped out. However, changes can be made all the time. Uh, and your design should be such that those changes don't break the whole system. Okay? So everything should be built into nice modular pieces uh, that interact in nice ways. So some recommendations is to organize programs around objects. And that's the entire object-oriented paradigm that we've been seeing over and over in Java. So that is, for example, in Java, all of the things that have to do with a list are in one file, the array list deck, for example, file. Uh, and all the information about how one of those works is there. All of the functions are there. All the instance variables are there in that one place. Uh, another thing is this notion of letting objects decide how to do things. Um, so, for example, with uh, interface and, or with uh, implementation inheritance and interface inheritance, for that matter, whenever you overwrite a method, whenever I call the add last method, dynamic method selection calls the right um, the right function, and things work beautifully. So that's another instance, or that's a, an example of how the Java language uh, incorporates these ideas. Now, another that's really important is this notion of hiding information that others don't need. And this is so fundamental and so important to managing a big system. Uh, and it's something that some of you guys are starting to see a little bit of challenges with with Project 1B, as I'll explain in a short while. Now, this whole notion of managing complexity, the reason I'm going on this little rant here is that I want to remind you that this is ultimately the thing that's going to make you successful or not successful as a programmer, is this notion of managing complexity. So this, ter this term encapsulation, uh, I'm borrowing these definitions from Jonathan Shuchek, who also teaches this class sometimes. Uh, and so he defines a module as a set of methods that work together as a whole to perform some task. So maybe you have a class, and these maybe five or six methods, they do something, right? They capture the notion of a list or whatever. And we'll say that a module is said to be encapsulated if the implementation is completely hidden. That is, the only way that you can interact with this object is through a documented interface. So the little picture I have here on the left is of a cell. Even though the internals of a cell are incredibly complex, you know, you have chromosomes and ribosomes and tRNAs and whatever else, uh, this object, from an outside perspective, it's encapsulated. And you don't really need to know how all that works to know things like bacteria can make you sick or whatever else they can do for you. They can produce natto, you know, bacteria stuff. Likewise, in a ray deck, you don't need to know how the internals work. You have a documented inter interface, add last, remove last, size, and so forth. And that's the way you interact with it. So on project 1B, let's see how encapsulation really uh, can be an important notion uh, by considering some questions that students have. Okay? So project 1B, you have to build 
an auto grader for project 1A, which was the construction of this class and another. And I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you've already finished project 1A. If not, maybe this example will be lost on you. Uh, but in project 1B, you have to know, uh, you have to write tests that prove that a specific implementation of array deck is broken. So some questions students asked. How do we check the length of student array deck? I'm trying to find a bug in the resize method. I know it must have one, but I don't see how to check the length. In fact, if I try to do student array deck dot length, it's not working, so I don't know how to check whether or not it expands or another. I wanted to test whether resizing is working properly, but when I try to call array dot items dot length, the compiler yells at me and it says, this is a private variable. Is there some way around this or do we just not test that? Uh, or another, can we assume these things about student array deck? Can we assume it uses next front equals four, next last equals five, and starting size array eight? So in all of these cases, the student trying to write an auto grader is trying to think below the level of abstraction that I think is most appropriate. Uh, it's just like imagine, imagine going to the doctor and you're trying to figure out, uh, for example, why someone is sick, okay? Or are they sick? Let's say, are they sick? Even simpler question. So you can ask them questions and say, you know, how are you feeling? You can check the reflexes. And you could also take a slice of their finger and put it under a scanning electron microscope and look at it at the atomic level. But the point is that's not really important. Maybe you'd learn something, maybe you wouldn't. Um, but the basic functioning of a human is based on some higher level principles. And trying to go down to that low level is just not the right way to diagnose the sickness of a person any more than this, I think, is a good way to diagnose the sickness of a class. Now, sometimes it makes sense to write tests at this very low level of abstraction, but I think, imagine our purpose, or sorry, our goal as uh, auto grader writers, as instructors. We have no idea how you wrote your array deck. I mean, you could have done any number of really strange things and we, would, we wouldn't know. Maybe you have two arrays, five arrays, who knows? Uh, and we have to just make sure that things obey the interface. That is, the module you built, we're going to treat it as a nicely encapsulated thing, and then we're going to make sure that it behaves the way we expect. So in effect, as the user of an array deck, you cannot observe the internals in the array deck, ideally. And one thing I love about Java is that the private keyword makes it actually impossible, well, unless you use a special library called reflections, uh, to look inside of the object. And even when you write tests, you don't usually want to look inside. So this right here, this picture, I want to bring this back, okay? So always in any Java program, in any program you ever write, there's going to be this high level of abstraction and a low level of abstraction. And often there'll actually be many layers of these things over and over uh, that make it so that you only have to think about one universe at a time. So this example I had before was of the cave dwellers. As far as they're concerned, the list contains 5, 3, 1, 7, and 22. Now, of course, the monks here who are manipulating the shadows using these devices and this fire, they know that the secret is there's actually an array of length 100, uh, there's the size variable, all this stuff, but the user has no idea. And when you write tests, you should be thinking like a user. You should be thinking, what can I do to interact with these shadows to see if they have a self-consistent logic? So for example, I don't know, I make like a horse noise, or whatever. Maybe I expect this horse to react and the vase to not react. And it's these monks' job to do their, to, to make sure that things are manipulated properly. Uh, but I'm not supposed to, as someone here, I'm not supposed to climb over the wall and start asking the monks questions uh, because I don't even know this world exists. The private keyword makes this wall absolute. And I think that's a lovely thing about Java. Okay. So when it comes to encapsulation, uh, one thing I want to mention here is that in Java, that it's just a great language for making encapsulation have more teeth. Right? You can use encapsulation in a language like Python, but there, um, the thing, it's more convention than it is enforced by a compiler. So it's a little more serious in Java. So by making instance variables private and methods like resize private, you're in better shape. Now, as we'll see in the next video, one thing I think is very interesting is the interplay between implementation inheritance and encapsulation. And in fact, it's fundamentally broken in a way that I think is very interesting.